Good evening, YouTube, BookTube. This is Johnny. Time to make a video. I was looking at my videos and it's been two days. I wasn't going to make a video. I thought I might do it in the morning. But then I thought to myself, it's only 8.26 here in Holland, Michigan. It is January the 20th, 2020. It's a Monday, so it's like a, a Monday reads. Uh, I thought I might as well just make a video now. My wife does not get back from Seattle until Wednesday late afternoon. And so it's been two days. Thought as well make a video last night. What did I do last night? I didn't know what to do last night. Last night I... I don't remember what I did. It was a Sunday night. Oh, what was it? Well, yeah, it was the, there was football last night. I watched the Packers get beat by the 49ers. And then I went down the street to our oldest son's place, Caleb and his wife Emily and Josephine and Cora, and watched the Kansas City Chiefs beat the Titans. So had dinner there. Then I came home. I came home after the first game. It was 6.20. And then I watched the 49ers beat the Green Bay Packers. I turned it off about 9 o'clock. My wife called to say goodnight from Seattle. I went to bed and I was, I was been reading this. This Orlando Figs the Europeans, Three Lives, and the Making of a Cosmopolitan Culture. So I read this last night, and when I, today I volunteered at the library used bookstore, The Book Nook, and I, this is what I read when I wasn't wandering around the store. The store is so quiet that I was falling asleep. <laughs> so when I would, I'd read for a while, and then I'd kind of start dozing off, then I'd get up and I'd walk around, look at the books, look at the CDs, look at the DVDs. I'd go in the back where all the, the back of the, it's where they bring in all the donations and there's other things back there. You, you have to go through the doors to get there. And I'd look around and, and then I'd sit down again and there is a little radio there with a CD player, and there's CD, we do sell CDs at the Book Nook, and so I put some music on, but I didn't really find anything that really that I really like. I know, it's like uh, tonight, tonight I was talking to my wife, she called around, well here it was like 5 o'clock, maybe 4, I think it was 5 o'clock. And I told her, I can't listen to music. You know, it's like, I thought when my wife is gone, I, I play some of my music. I turn the music on really loud and, and really, you know, get grooving. But I don't feel like listening to music. I just feel like reading or writing or messing with the computer or just going to bed. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I just can't take any noise. I don't know what it is. It's kind of like I just like hearing what's going on inside my head. That's probably it. Now I did listen to Destroyer this evening and on the Amazon Music I have. I have three or four, I think five CDs by Destroyer, but I haven't bought anything in the last couple of years. So anyway, what I've been reading, as I said, I've been reading this and this morning I read some more of William Perkins, Volume 8. As I've read his Discourse, A Discourse of Conscience. So I read that. And tonight I got back out. I'm trying to get into books that I was reading and then I got sidetracked. I got back out. I've been reading this evening 
Blue Orchard, not Blue, Blood Orchard, on a Natural History of America by Charles Bolden. I'm trying to get myself finishing some books and not starting new books. I mean, I'm always getting books and I'm always starting books and putting books aside. But it's kind of like you have to be a, I'm kind of a mood reader and every book that you pick up has a certain mood, a certain kind of state it puts you in. And I suppose tonight I was in the Blood Orchard mood by Charles Bowden. I told you this is a trilogy. This is the first volume and I do plan to get the other two volumes in this trilogy. I really like this. So as far as my diary, we're on the second volume. Today I ended on page 68 for the year 2020. And today, tomorrow is the 21st. Today was Martin Luther King Jr. Day. That's why you didn't get any mail. But I did get something today. And that's one thing I'm going to show in this video. So I went to the book nook and I did bring home two books. I found a Jim Harrison, as I've shown, I... Jim Harrison, he's a Michigan writer. He lived up in the he lived in the Upper Peninsula, and I did. I saw this at the book nook, and, and I wasn't sure if I had it because I have like almost twenty of his books. But lo and behold, I didn't have this one. It's kind of like a memoir. It says here. Uh, the New York Times best-selling author Jim Harrison was one of our most beloved and acclaimed writers, adored by both readers and critics. His first novel, Wolf, is a boisterous, elegant meditation on youth, nature, America, and what it means to live with an open, though often wounded heart. After too many nameless women and drunken nights, Swanson abandons Manhattan to roam the wilderness, hoping to catch a glimpse of one of the rare wolves that prowl the northern Michigan. As he gets up camp in the woods of Michigan's Upper Peninsula, he pauses often for reflection, remembering his many rollicking evenings spent throughout the United States. A harrowing novel of introspection, Harrison's astonishing debut, Wolf, serves as a perfect introduction to his remarkable insight, storytelling, and evo evocation of the natural world. He lived from 1937 and he died in 2016. Was the New York Times best-selling author of 39 other books of fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. So I picked this up and I didn't have it when I was cataloging it in my library thing. I didn't have it. So I was really pleased I didn't have this one. And I did notice it's, it's a reprint. It was uh, December 2018. It was reprinted. And then I picked up this Phil Kerr, The Second Angel. You all know... Uh, I collect the novels of Phil Kerr. He did that series of um, of that detective during in Berlin during the time of the Nazis. I was going to bring them up here from the book, uh, the lower level, but I didn't. But this one I came across, The Second Angel by Phil Kerr. Uh, so I got this. It's it's kind of hard to explain what this is about. I, I read 27 pages of it when I was at the book nook and it's kind of strange. Anyway, I picked this up. So I, that's what I got at the book nook today. I also got this book from my wife at the book nook. 
My wife likes Rick Bragg. He he's written several books. Uh, they're all kind of nonfiction about. Uh, this is the best cook in the world. Tales from my mama's southern table by Rick Br Rick Bragg. You probably seen his books. My wife told me if she ever if I see any new books by him to pick it up. And we have his other books, uh, but we don't. My we don't have this one. Uh, all but all over but shouting. Uh, Ava's man. Those. But this is a Rick Bragg book. Yeah. So I got this for my wife. So I came home from the book nook and I noticed there was a package on the porch. The front porch. And uh, I was watching a video last week, the History Shelf, and she mentioned this online book site called Hamilton Books. And so I checked it out, and the, the prices were really, really, really great. <laughs> and I saw four books that I ordered. And when I got home today, they were on the porch. And this is what I got from Hamilton Books. Hamilton Books. And the first one I ordered, and I got all these for $5.99. And this book retails for $32 USA. <laughs> I got it for $5.99. That's it. Now, I don't... I don't know what this is. It's not a reject or a used book, but it's in good condition. This is Flo Flaubert in the Ruins of Paris, the Story of a Friendship, a novel in a terrible year by Peter Brooks. As you all know, I am really into Flaubert. He's one of my favorite writers. And I'm always reading about him and reading his writings. And then I picked up this book and I noticed that the hit she had ordered this too, The History Shelf, Life and Culture, Selected Letters of Loyal Tr Trilling, edited by Adam Kirsch. I have his, uh, several books by Loyal, Tr Loyal Trilling, The Liberal Imagination, and his novel, The Mid Middle of the Journey. I also have a biography of his marriage, but this is his letters. And I got this for $5.99. And I've been wanting this. I noticed that in here, there's a letter to Allen Ginsberg. Allen Ginsberg. And as you all know, I am really into Allen Ginsberg. Well, there's a mark on this one. Maybe this is a, re a reject. Anyway, there's also... Some other letters in here by different people that I I have come across. Several letters to Alan Alan Ginsberg, Edmund Wilson. As you all know, I collect the writings of Edmund Wilson. So I got that, and then I picked up. This biography on William Godwin, philosopher, novelist, and revolutionary. Uh, it says here in the back, William Godwin has long been known for his literary connections as the husband of Mary Wollstonecraft, the father of Mary Shelley. So he was the husband of Mary Wollstonecraft, the father of Mary Shelley, the friend of Coolidge, Lamb, and Hazlitt, the mentor of the young Wordsworth, Southerly, and Shelley, and the opponent of Matthias. Godwin has been recently recognized, however, as the most capable exponent, exponent of philosophical anarchism, an original moral thinker, a pioneer in socialist economics, and progressive education and a novelist of great skill. Yeah, last year I read a biography on 
Mary Wollstonecraft and also on Mary Shelley, on Mary Shelley, who wrote, as you all know, Frankenstein. So I, I got this for $5.99. And then I picked up this. Now a lot of people don't know who this man is, this photographer, but this is American Witness, The Art and Life of Robert Frank. Robert Frank was a photographer and uh, he, uh, it says here in the back, this Frank found himself in the late 40s at the Red Hot Social Center of Bohemian New York in the 50s and 60s, becoming friends with everyone from Jack Kerouac, Allen Ginsberg, Peter Ors or Orskiski, the photog photographer Walker Evans, actor Zero Monstel, painter w William D. Kooning, Bob Dylan, jazz musician Ornette Coleman, Charles Mingus, and more. Uh, anyway, he wrote, he was, he also filmed a, a very famous beat movie called Pulling Up Daisies, and he did a book of, of photography that Kerouac wrote the introduction to. So, this is American Witness, The Art and Life of Robert Frank by R.J. Smith. So, those are the things I got. Got these all for, well, $29. We had to pay postage. So, I got these. Flaubert and the Ruins of Paris, Life and Culture, Selected Letters of Lyle Trilling, a biography on William Godwin, and American Witness, The Art and Life of Robert Frank. So, I got those to look at in my state of exile as I wander the American wasteland. Now, you know, someone made a comment. <laughs> a while back about, well, how can you say you live in the wasteland when I'm living here in suburbia, living in a nice, quiet little town called Holland? I'm using that metaphorically. To me, yeah, I know I live in the lap of luxury. I'm very blessed. Like today when I was coming home from the book nook, you know, I was going down the street we live on and I pushed the button to open up the garage door and I thought, man, I am really blessed that I have a warm house. I could walk into this house and books and music and food and I have my oldest son and his family down the street and my daughter's doing well there in Denver with her family and Carol's having a good time with our other son, Josiah and Hannah and Marika there in Seattle and just blessings overflowing. So how can I say uh, I'm in the wasteland? Well, as a Christian, you're in this world, but you're, you're really a stranger in a foreign land. What you really are longing for is to go into that new creation that you're longing to, uh, to uh, go to heaven. <laughs> it's like... Um, I was thinking of those verses, it says, um, it says in 1 Peter in the New Testament, chapter 1, verse 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. See, that's what I'm saying. That I have this inheritance that's incorruptible, undefiled, and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for me, for all those 
who are who have embraced Jesus Christ with saving faith and have repented their sins. But he says here to the pilgrims, the sojourners, the temporary residents, we are temporary residents here in America on the planet Earth. But we have, through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, because Jesus has, rose, has risen from the dead, that's our guarantee and our assurance and know you know Jesus when Jesus rose from the dead because he is our mediator he's our great high priest we are united to him when he rose from the dead we rose with him and because we're united to him mystically so and now and not only that but we are experiencing right now as Christians the resurrection life of Christ we are experiencing the life to come right now and that's what's sanctifying us and conforming us and giving us the grace to go through this wasteland <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say so anyway that's what I mean by the wasteland I'm just a sojourner a temporary resident and why I'm why we're here as Christians we're to love God you know we're to love people love the Saints you know, help the widow, help the poor, the prisoner, those who are in need, you know, share out of our abundance. And, yeah, and work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So maybe that's what's on my mind. It's like, as the older I get, I see how quickly life is just so quickly going by. So I hope you had... Uh, a good weekend. They had a good Monday. This is Monday Reads. Like I said, tonight I'm reading Blood Orchard. And in the morning I've been reading the works of William Perkins on Discourse on Conscience. Reading Orlando Figs, the Europeans, the Europeans, The Three Lives and the Making of a Cosmopolitan Culture. So I hope you have a good week. I might make a video tomorrow night. I don't know. I got some more books I'd like to read. I have other books coming in the mail this week, some novels. I don't think I'm going to go anywhere tomorrow. I have to put gas in my van. I know that. The gas is really cheap. It's cheap as I've ever seen it lately. So anyway, I'll stop my rambling. I hope you, thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments. Do pray you're doing well. That, hey, that you are that you know the blessings of God and you have tasted the sweetness of God's divine love in Christ. Until next time, bye.